Hello my friends, today we are in Luminar Neo and we will learn all about the math tool. When you go into your edit, your math will be right here under creative tab and when you click on it, it will open a dialog. Make sure this arrow is open so you can see the color toning part of the tool. And uh, as you can see, we have an amount slider. We're going to go through all these sliders so you can better understand what the tool does because you cannot properly use it if you don't know what it does. So let's explain all of this. We have a mount. When the amount is at zero, we cannot move any other sliders. We need to put some amount of this effect on, otherwise we cannot adjust other sliders. You see, the moment I move it to one or more, the other sliders become available to us. So let's start with a pretty big amount, like around 70s. That way we see what the tool does. Fade. When we move the fade to the right, what is happening, all the blacks in the image are getting faded, they're getting lifted up, losing detail as you go into the right side, they become pretty much gray. So we know what the amount does, is the amount of the effect of the tool. Fade lifts the blacks, becomes more gray. And then we have contrast, it does just that, applies contrast. Vividness, it's kind of like a saturation tool, so we'll apply more color into the shadows. This whole matte is just targeting the shadows. It does affect the highlights as well a little bit, but it's mostly in the shadows. And then if we go to color toning, and you see all the sliders are gray because we need to add the range first. The moment we move range to the right, then with the hue and saturations become available to us as well. Range is just the same as the amount. So think of range as amount. How much color do we want to do in this color toning? So if I have it at zero, nothing happens. If I have it to 100, we are adding a lot of color. And hue, this is what color are we adding in the shadows. Right now it's set on this red, but as I slide it, you see it will go through green, through blue, magenta, and back to red. And now we have 100% red or 100% blue. We can also increase the saturation we we'll get this cyan kind of like everywhere, very strong. Now, we understand what all the sliders do. Let's see how we use them in real life. I'm going to go back to my images. And I took these images a few months ago with the idea that I wanted to edit them in this faded look because I wanted to look more antique, more like, you know, it was taken many years ago. So I will start with this image. And I will go to edit. I will go to matte. First, I would like to move the amount somewhere around the 70s. I think it's a good number. And then I will add some fade. As you see, when I move the amount high, it already creates some fade. And then as I move the fade up, the blacks are being lifted. And if I go all the way to 100, we're losing all kinds of details in the image. So I just want to add a little bit of fade and then I will reduce the amount to something that looks good to me, something like that. I do want to add a little bit of contrast because I kind of lost that when I faded. And then I will add a little bit of vividness, not too much, just to add a little bit of color back. But as you look at those older pictures, you will see they're usually pretty desaturated and they do not have a lot of color. Let's move into the color toning. And here I will increase the range all the way to 100 so I can see exactly what color I'm working with. And for this image, I want to add a blue, something like that. Kind of to play with the blue uh, cloth and the flowers. And then I will decrease the range, which is really the amount of how much blue we want, do you see? All the way to 100 to 0. So I will just add a little bit of blue in the shadows, something like that. And let's see if we increase the saturation. It's not going to affect that much. There you go. Now I want to add a vignette to this image and the way I would create this, I'm not going to go to our typical vignette. I'm just going to take the eraser and erase this soft matte look that we did into the outer portion of the image and that will just automatically create a vignette for us. So I'll take a nice big brush and just kind of paint in the very edges of the image. There you go. And now let's see, this is our before and after. Before and after. We created a nice soft matte look on this image. 
I am going to show you a different way of creating the same exact effect. I will use this image this time. And sometimes I prefer this method just because, I don't know, it's just the way I'm used to use it in Photoshop where we do not have a matte uh, slider. So I will go to develop and then I'll go into my curve tool and I click on this white dot. This is our luminance. And first I want to put some dots. If you don't never use the curve tool, then you need to know that the middle we, middle, we have mid tones on the right side. We have the highlight and the very right side. We have white on the left side over here. We have our shadows and on the very left side on the edge is our pure blacks. So I'm going to place some dots and that will prevent this slider moving anywhere into the highlights and the mid tones. I only want to affect the blacks, the very shadows, because as you saw, matte effect only affects the shadows. So now that I have these dots placed, I am going to lift my blacks. And if you see, when I move this point upwards, we're lifting the blacks, creating that nice fade. So something like that looks good to me. Now, how can we add that blue uh, color that we added with the matte? Well, we have to go to our blue section and I will do the same thing. I will put my three dots so it doesn't move into the midtones or the highlights. And now I will just add some blue into the shadows. And you see, I can put a lot of blue or I can put a little bit of blue. And this is our image before and after. Before and after. And this way we created that matte look with two different techniques. Let's take one more example. I have these egg photos that I took. I really like the image the way it's right now, but let's see if we can make it matte. And by the way, this surface, I know a lot of people ask me what this is. This is an Ericsson surface. They make great, great surfaces. They are very pricey and they are not waterproof, but if you do just like, you know, still life photos, they're really a great investment. They're very heavy though. All right, so let's go to our mat again. I will increase the amount to around 70. I will add a little bit of fade, something like that. I do not want to add much contrast, just a tiny little bit, maybe to 15. I do not want to add any kind of saturation to it, but I will go to color toning. And let's see, I kind of like the red has in it. Let's see if I move it to orange. I don't know, maybe reddish orange, something like that. And then I'll take it down a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. This is our before and after. Before and after. Um, I think it's a little bit too much. I'm gonna take the amount down. Let's see now. Before and after. And that is much better. Before and after. All right, we'll take one more example. Let's see. Maybe we'll take, which example, which example? We will use this image. And as you can see, when I took these images, I did have in mind before I took the image that I wanted to make them this, uh, you know, vintage old, you know, style of faded look. So because of that, that's why I wore this apron and kind of just neutral color clothing because this is the look I was going for. So you have to think ahead of time how you want to edit your photos before you take the photos. So let's go back to our mat and I'm going to increase the amount again to about 70. I'll add a little bit of fade and now I will reduce the amount. Something like that looks good to me. Add a little bit of contrast. I don't really want to add much color. And then for the toning, I do like that reddish look. I feel like it gives it more earthy look. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that, not too much. So let's see now. This is our before and after. And I think the bread, look at the crust. It looks better with the reddish. So that's the before. This is the after. Before and after. You can see it here on the inside of the bread. Before and after. So this is how you would use the matte tool onto Luminar Neo. Like I said, I do not use it very often because I will use um, the curve tool and to develop and that's how I will map all my photos if I want to do that. I hope you learned something new. 
Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I will see you in my next video.